for our Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the mercy shown us, Lord, the grace you've given us. And we come this morning thanking you, Lord, that we come to serve you, for you have served us. And so, Lord, as we grow in the transformation of heart and mind, that our lives, Lord, would duplicate, Lord, the life given to us through your suffering, through your death, burial, and resurrection. May we take hold of this great salvation you have given us, that we truly might be lights in this day in which we live. Help us. Help us in our weakness that we might become strong in you. Teach us, Lord, your ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. This morning I would like to talk to you and continue with our theme this year. The thing that says it takes a renewed mind for Christian living. And that this is the thing that we will reign out the rest of our life here. Because as children of God, we are to be transformed by the renewing of our minds that we might prove what the good, acceptable, perfect will of God is for our lives. And so this morning as we're looking at the word in Romans 6, I want to look at this thought. Living right from the heart. Living right from the heart. The Bible tells us that out of the heart the mouth speaks. But if you have a right heart, you're going to live right. You're going to speak right. You're going to do right. What a right heart. Now, all of us know what a wrong heart looks like. Hmm. If you're not sure what a wrong heart looks like, turn to your left, turn to your right. Now, get, don't, don't think that you're judging, because they're looking right back at you, too. Because all of us have experienced what it is to live wrong. All of us. Okay, all right. I saw some looks up there like. <laughs> so the Bible tells us as we look today at Romans chapter 6. For sin had no dominion over you. Since you are not under law, but under grace. That the word of God has been clear to us that we as children of God need to know that we're not living the law. We're not living the Ten Commandments. And Jesus said that the only commandment we need to know is love the Lord God with all of our heart, our mind, and our strength. And the other is like that. Love your neighbor as yourself. That if we would operate in the love of God, we will do right with one another. We'll do right as children of God. We will do right as brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. We don't have to say that I'm going to not lie, steal, kill. I'm not going to destroy. I'm not going to do this. Don't do that. The Word of God just says it's simple. Love the Lord God with everything you got. Put Him first in everything. You're going to be all right. Amen. All right. Doesn't matter what we put there, out there, and say, you know, this is what I'm struggling with. Then the question would come down to us, how you live. What's in your heart? How you doing? I have found that over the years when people don't know you, they may say all manner of things to you. May talk to you like you're one of the boys, one of the girls. And then if they find out that you're in ministry, all of a sudden you can see them struggling. Their mouths would open and they were going to say the normal thing they would say to me at Caterpillar. But now that they've heard, they go, and they're searching for a word to say. Now I'm going to tell you, there ain't no word that they said that I had not said myself. I'm not shocked by it. I know that if you're not in Christ, this is what comes out of us. I'm not shocked by when people come into the office and tell me all oh, manner of struggle of life. I'm not shocked. Shocked by it because why? I've been there. And wrote some of the chapters. But the word of God says that now that we have Christ in us, sin no longer has dominion over us. It doesn't say that we won't sin, but it lets us know that we're not under the law of God, we're under the grace of God. And he only taught me the phrase that she had learned that God's righteousness at Christ's expense is grace. God's righteousness at Christ's expense. That we have received grace through Christ. He suffered what we should be going through. He died the death we should have died, but he loved us so much. 
that here it tells us that we are not under the law. We're not trying to do it right. We're under the grace of God, and because of that, you are right. But then it goes on to tell us, then what then? Because we're under grace and because the grace of God covers us, that it is all right to sin? The Bible tells us no. Are we to sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? By no means, and one translation said, God forbid that you think just because you've got grace, you can just go out there and do everything and come with a few tears. I feel bad. I'm sorry I got caught. Because a lot of times I'm reason we're sorry because we got caught. It doesn't mean we don't like it, that we hate what we're doing. I'm just saying that we won't own up what we're doing until we get caught. So I'm just going to tell you today just that God saves everything and you've been caught. What my mama didn't see, God saw. What I came from Anita, God saw. What I've tried to cover up and mask over, God has seen. But thank God for the grace. But because we understand that we're under grace, God is saying, can we do better? Do you want to do better? And so here we're looking at the text. Because the children of God will never get to the place unless we want to get to that place. I want to do better. We have the desire to do better to do better. And that only comes through the empowerment that I know that I can't do it other than Christ in me. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey? Either of sin, which leads to death, or obedience, which leads to righteousness. That you can't serve two masters. You're either going to be about Jesus or you're going to be about nothing. See, I, I don't believe that as children of God that we can just act any old way, do any old thing, and then expect great things to happen or God to use us in a mighty way. Now, I understand, and I, and I said it about myself, God used a donkey to get with me. God used a donkey. So if God can use a donkey, surely he can use me. Use you. But I don't want to be that person that God just uses because to know and let the world know that he is God. I pray that we would be used because we desire the righteousness and the holiness that comes through Christ Jesus our Lord. That we would desire to do right because we have him in our heart and in our lives. And so here it tells us that you're either going to be about Jesus or you're going to be about nothing. About him or about nothing. See, I, I want to make it clear this morning. When you're not about the things of God, you're about nothing. So that eliminates me saying... I know I messed up here and I'm not doing this here and I'm not doing this here. But you know, brother, I do this and I do that. I am reading my Bible. I am praying. I am, I am doing this here. I understand that I'm out there kicking it up. I understand I'm out there drugging it up, drinking it up. I understand I'm looking on things on the internet I shouldn't. I understand that I say bad things about my neighbor and stuff and, and it's sometimes about you. But surely God knows that I did these three things that were good. I, I, I do a Bible study on Wednesday nights, and I, I, I'm here practically every Sunday. And, and in fact, you can find me at church just about every day of the week and stuff. Uh, uh, you know, I, I try to help with the food pantry and help people move. You know, I, I, I do all of those things there. And the Lord says, I don't care. Because if I don't have you, you don't have nothing. That's what he's talking about. He's saying, I got to have you. I don't care about your stuff. I don't care about what you do. If you're not doing it because you desire to be about me, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. Amen. Now, what does this look like? This is how it looks like. Because if you're doing things for the wrong reason and people don't agree with you, you'll stop doing it. 
God put it on my heart to do this thing here, but you know, I'm not getting no help, Pastor, so I'm not coming back. Well, either God put it on your heart to do it, or God didn't put it on your heart to do it. God said, but I'm not going to do it now because why? They really ticked me off not too long ago. We're either about the things of God or we're not about it. And that's what here the, the scriptures are telling us today. That we're going to be about the righteousness of God, that, and that obedience to righteousness, or we're going to be about the things that lead to death. But thanks be to God that you are, were once slaves of sin, but have become obedient from the heart to the standard, to the teaching of which you were committed. Now what he's talking about here is that he says through the teaching, the good news of the gospel of Christ, that the word of God tells us that we are now new in him. Old things have passed away and we have become new in him. And that's what we have now committed our heart. I've come to receive the Lord as my personal Savior. Oh, I, I, I come down and, and I've seen people come down over the years and, and, and they feel so good. And they're feeling good. And then I say, how are things going? God's just really blessing me. I said, how's that? He said, well, he gave me a job. I said, praise the Lord. And, 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 uh, and, and, and it's giving me new friends. Praise God. And then they go and tell me, says, and he gave me a new place to live. And I said, well, where are you living at? Well, I met so-and-so the other day. So you met a, a, a girl, you met a boy, and God gave you this person so you can move in with them and live in sin. Paul says that we're committed to the teaching. And the teaching of God is that now that we're in Christ Jesus, our desire is that we want to live for the Lord. Now, it doesn't mean that we know how to do it, but it says that the desire within us should be that we want to live for God and to glorify Him in everything that we do and say. Now, I know what some of you are thinking this morning. Pastor, if you preach a message like this, then you're going to know that you're going to drive people away. But here, Paul is telling us through the Scriptures is that this is what draws people to God. Because when I begin to understand that God wants me to have his best for my life, then I begin to decide what is good for me in Christ or what is good for me in sin. Because that's what it boils down to. And that's what he's saying to us about when we desire the good things of God, when we're desiring a new life in Christ, we need to be real with it and understand it's either going to be about the glory of God or it's going to be about the selfishness of my flesh. And I'm going to tell you, the Bible says that there dwells no good thing in me. That I looked in the mirror and I said, God, there is some good thing about me. And the Lord said, there's no good thing in you. <laughs> Lord, but I, he said, if there's anything good in you, it has come from me because there dwells no good thing in you. Amen. And when I begin to understand that, and I hope you get it this morning, that when we begin to embrace the fact that dwells nothing in me that is good except God, and I desire good to come out of me, well, then what is the catalyst then for my goodness? Christ. Christ. But if I understand that, then it just makes it just as much sense that if I'm going to get in my automobile and drive, I'm going to have to continue to put gas in it. I'll never accomplish and get to the place where I want to go without stopping to fill up. And gas is for going. So you don't fill up and then park the car and never use it. So you can always talk about, I got a tank full of gas. We fill up so that we can use it. The Spirit of God has filled us up to be used. So then it goes on to tell us, but thanks be to God. That you were once slaves of sin and become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching them to which you were committed. And having been set free from sin, have become slaves to righteousness. So then the Bible is telling us that I'm either going to serve God or I'm going to serve me. I'm not even going to say the devil. Because a lot of things I'm doing, the devil ain't had nothing to do with it. I've made all of the wrong choices. Not just five years ago, not, not just four years ago, not just three, not two years ago, not just last year, some of the time this past week. That's your part to say amen. 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 I come short. 
But he says there ought to be a desire in me to be committed to the righteousness of God. And that I would learn during the times of my misbehavior that in Christ I would desire to do good. And so what happens is that the Bible says there has to be a heart change within me. Because if my heart don't change to the things of God, then no matter how I try to go, the old me will always be present. Having its way. So I'm set free. To become a slave to righteousness. Then Paul says, I'm not talking about human terms because you were uh, natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness. I like the fact that he puts that there. There is no such thing as we only do a little bit of sin. Sin is never satisfied with just a little bit. At least I've never been able to say, this is all the sin I'm going to do. <laughs> because if I do this sin in this area, and I like it, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to do a little more sin. Now I'm going to do a little more sin, because why? We are junkies to sin. And this flesh is never satisfied with just a little. And so the Bible tells me then that I have to recognize that this is how I was apart from Christ, and I have these natural limitations to try to do right because when I was doing even this little bit of sin, oh, I, I'm going to tell you I've never been just a little bit of sinner. I'm a champion sinner. I do everything for all. If I'm out there, I was out there. But now that I'm a child of God, I'm trying to be whole all about Jesus. That I want him to be my everything. And so here the word is telling us that one time I was like that. I had natural limitations. For once I was a slave to impurity and lawlessness, which led to more lawlessness. So now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to being set apart in Christ Jesus. That the righteous living will cause me to be set apart, that my life will be about one thing, Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you desire within your members to say, Lord, I just want to be about you? Then he says, if you desire them to be about me, then you have to put me number one in your life. And if I'm number one in your life, you will find yourself being set apart for the things that I desire. But that has to come then out of my heart through a renewed mind. Because I, 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 I've, I've had wish lists. I've had the things that I want to do. I, I, I've tried to journal, you, you know, and, and write things down. I'm going to do this and this and this. I, I have my list. And then after a while, I just take the list and I just throw it away. Because it gets hard. And so the Bible's telling us is that you just can't live out the list. There has to be a transformation in your heart, which leads to a transformation of your mind. Last week when we looked at the scriptures from a couple weeks ago, that came out of Colossians, that we looked at verse 7 of Colossians 3. And this you too once walked. When you were living in them, and what he was talking about was that in verse 5, put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passions, evil desires, covetedness, which is idolatry. And on account of these, the wrath of God is coming. And so verse 7 said, then, in this you too once walked when you were living in them, but now you must put them all away. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, obscene talk with your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with this practices. And have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge and after the image of Christ. That the renewing in Christ Jesus has to be that we have to grow in the understanding of who we are. And that's why it's so important that we have a transformed heart and mind. Because if I don't allow my heart and my mind to be transformed in the teachings of the word of God, I will continue to live out in things I know. And the Bible just said to us is that the things I know dwell to nothing good. To nothing good. Now I'm not, under, I understand that no matter how hard we try, there's going to be times that my flesh is going to get the best of me. But the more I strive after God, I'm going to tell you, the more we do this, we will have a quicker response to getting back to the place where we need to be. 
What used to take us weeks now only takes us a matter of moments. That our hearts are convicted and we begin to say, Lord, forgive me. And then we even want to come to that place of saying, forgive me. I'm sorry I said I did what I did because why? I know it doesn't bring God glory and, and I'm better than that because I have Christ in me. He says there's something that has changed within us because we love the Lord our God. But as we're looking at Romans 6, I had to go back to Romans 5 to understand what Paul was talking about in, in this as he was talking to the, the church there in Rome. Verse 5, he says, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith and have, place, and have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. We rejoice in hope of the glory of God that he tells us that we have peace with God through faith. And if I want to have faith, then it says that faith then has a discipline or it begins to be displayed in the way that we live. I can't say that I have faith in God and then want to live like me. Because if I believe that I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus, then it's just automatic that my thought would be that I want to be better as a child of God. And if I desire them to be a, a better as a child of God, it says then I will begin to put on that new man and then I would find then that the things I have with God will bring forth peace. Now see, it, it tells us then that if you're a child of God and you're not walking the way God would have you to walk, you're in a place of no peace. Because we can't be satisfied when we know to do right and we choose not to do that. But then he goes on to tell us that this happened to us because of Adam's sin. Adam and Eve in the garden, Genesis. That it tells us about how that man fell into disobedience and because of that sin entered into man. And then we are born into this. And so therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man and death through sin, and so death spreads to all men because all sin. For sin indeed was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not counted where there is no law. Now what it's saying is when you're ignorant of something, you might be able to get away with it. But once mom and daddy told you this is wrong and you did it, you got behind it. So when you didn't understand, God said, I understand. You don't understand. You don't know. I can drive through that intersection all the time because why? There's no stop sign. I'm not breaking the law. I can just go through that line. I don't have to even look. I can just go. But one day they put a stop sign up. But I say, you know, I've always done it this way. But the stop sign is there. And it does not matter that I've always done it that way. The police will give me a ticket. But I say, as long as I remember, I've done it this way. They said, did you not see the stop sign? I said, yeah. But I've always drove through the intersection. They said, well, now I'm going to tell you every time you drive through this intersection, we'll be there and we'll give you a ticket. Now, I don't know about you, but after you have a hundred, enough $125 tickets, I bet when you get to that stop sign, you will... So then, why would I continue then in sin when God has said stop? What's it going to take for my life to come to a place in my life to understand I can't continue to go like this because while I'm paying a price I don't want to pay, dealing with something that God doesn't mean for me to have to deal with because why? I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. I can stop doing this because why he has given me the ability to understand that when he says don't do it, it is for my own good. God is never holding back anything good from us. He's just wanting us to know that when he's in the midst of the things that he's called us to do, it will be so much better for me. So it says through one man's disobedience all fell into sin. And it says now, man was sinning before there was a law. He didn't understand. But you know, he was still reaping the pain of sin. When Cain killed Abel, I bet it tore mom and daddy's heart. There was no commandment that said, Thou shalt not kill. 
But the act of sin still did what the act of sin did. It tears, it robs, it destroys. They already knew it was wrong because why? Nothing could be good and you feel this way. Nothing could be good and you have your son laid out here dead. Nothing could be good of that. And so Cain knew he done wrong. Cain knew that he had messed up. There was no law that said, Cain, you did wrong. Because, see, God had deposited something in us that will continue to woo and draw man to him. And when you're a child of God, I don't have to tell you that what you're doing is wrong, how you acting is wrong. You don't have to tell me. I know. So I'm not going to spend all my time telling you about what sinners do. We already know about this. This is about what the righteous do in Christ Jesus. Amen. It says also because of Christ. Now the law came to increase the trespass. But where sin increased, grace abound all the more. So that as sin reigneth in death, grace also reigns through righteousness leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That is telling us that even though there's sin in the world, there's the grace of God that is greater. There will never be a law that man will ever put into place that will ever stop man from sinning. There is no such thing. There is no law that will bring about righteous living. But the grace of God will cause an evil heart to want to live righteous. And through one man, Jesus says that I'm able to change man's life, that he will do better in the things that he desires to do. And so, what should we say then? Are we to continue in sin because grace abounds? By no means. Scripture is clear. Because we have God in our life that we ought to do better because Christ has paid it all. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ has, was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the newness of life. Scripture is telling us because of the finished work of Jesus Christ, heaven is our home. And because we have Christ, he says, I will demonstrate my love to you and you will be able to walk victorious in me when you understand I have broke the chain of sin that has held you back, that you can run free. Sin is nothing that allows you, we sometimes think that with sin that I can just go and do whatever I want to do, but sin limits you to achieving all the things that God has called you to do. Sin will come against everything that you know in your heart that you desire to achieve. I've seen some big dogs on some big chains. And as hard as they would want to run, there was a limit on where they could go. They marked hard. They ran hard. They looked ferocious. But I didn't care how hard that dog ran to me as long as that chain stopped him here. Huh? Couldn't do what he wanted to do. Growl at me, all those things. There. There's a limit on where you can go with sin. Sin will never allow you to become a great father, mother, brother, sister. Sin will never allow you to achieve greatness in the kingdom of God. Sin always binds, bind, binds us up. It keeps us from coming to the place that God has called us to. I desire all the riches of heaven, but as long as I'm in sin, I'll never achieve what God has in, my, in the plan of life for me or the plan of life he has for you. And so without a transformation of my heart, the transformation of my thoughts, my flesh will continue to keep me from achieving the goals that God has put in us. We're set free. We have the freedom to run after the things of God which brings greatness to our hearts and to our lives. 
But I'll never understand that unless I understand that sin continues to hold me back. Sin keeps me tied up. It keeps me strangled up. It keeps me from achieving all that God has in store for me. Because no matter how sweet sin seems to be, there's a price that comes with it. A price that comes with it. And God is saying to us today that if we desire to have the fullness that he comes, that, that he has brought to us by him coming, if we desire the greatness that God has in store for us, we have to understand that no matter who we are in Christ Jesus, as long as sin continues to reign in our body, this is as good as it gets. I can desire this. All that God has in store for me, I can desire it. But I'll never achieve it as long as I allow sin to reign in me. Oh, I'm not telling you that you don't have a desire, you don't have a, a, something that God has placed in you. But I've seen many who have said, I know God is speaking this to me. But because they let sin continue to reign, God was talking this, but they were only able to do this. Amen. Some people thought that this was pretty good because why? They came from this. But they cheated in this place here and they said, I'm better than I used to be. And people marveled because they said, I remember when you were this way, but now you're here. But God had been speaking to them about this. But my flesh continued to get in the way. And so all I could do was just talk about this. But I continued to live right here. And so the word of God is saying to us that if our hearts never are transformed, our mind will never come to the place where God is calling us to. That if you feel this morning that you're living beneath the place, the calling of God in your life, my question is, are you continuing to allow sin to keep you from going as far as you want to go? Because, see, the devil has a, a chain on us. Sin always lets you make you think you're getting away with something, but it doesn't. It always holds you back. And with sin, there always comes a price. The things that I've done in sin, I still pay for it. There's still people that will not trust me. There are people that still don't want to have nothing to do with me because why? I was in the way when I had known them. Now, I understand God's forgiven me. And I'll trust God to touch their hearts one day. But I know I've been forgiven. But I'm just telling you, there's a penalty when you continue to operate in sin. You'll never get to the place that God has called us to. So God's been speaking some great things to you. He's been speaking to you about the kingdom of God and all that you can achieve. I want my home to be better. I want my kids to be obedient. I want my grandchildren to act right. I want this to happen. I want a better job. I want, a, I want this here. I want healing in my body. I want to be used by God. I want to be able to lay my hand on somebody, see them made whole. I want all of these great things to happen. But you know, this, brother, you know, I'm just weak. I'm just weak. Uh, I've been at this for a long time. But the stop sign is up. It don't matter how long I've been at it. If I want to achieve what God has called me to do, if you desire to achieve what God has called you to do, it don't matter how long you've been there, the word of God says the stop sign is up. So what do you desire this morning? In Christ you can operate here. But he has called you to this. What do you want? What do you want? The Word of God speaks into our heart. And as we put it into obedience, our thought process begins to change. We come to understand that the reason the stop sign is there is for my own good. For I long to see the glory of God, but I'll never be able to see what God has in store as long as I want to continue to run past the stop sign. Because there's always a price when you do that. There's always something that's going to trip you up every time you desire to run past the stop sign. Maybe you think that because you started way down here, that this is pretty good. And so today I'm just going to ask you to get out of your poverty mentality. 
You serve a great God who says, put me to the test. He has great plans for your life. Doesn't matter where you come from. If you trust him, he will minister to you. And all children of God can have this in Christ Jesus. But if you choose to be disobedient, run past the stop sign. All I can tell you is that you're going to be If you have never received Christ as your personal Savior, I'm going to ask that you would come forward this morning. If you're desiring to be a member of First Baptist Church, I'm going to ask that you would come forward this morning. If you're needing prayer this morning, I'm going to ask that you would come forward as we say.
and, and I'm glad to hear. But as Frank found out, when you come, you gotta go to work. You gotta go to work. <laughs> I know they're gonna be a great addition to us here at First Baptist Church. But I, I, I want you to come up this morning and not have an opportunity to share anything on your heart that, or why you came to desire to be a member of First Baptist Church.
you for your heart. To you alone, God, we thank you for Jesus Christ, our Lord, Savior, and King. Yes. We ask that you would go with us, guide us, and direct us as we live, leave this place. And so we thank you, Lord, for the work that you are doing. And we thank you today, dear Heavenly Father, that out of the heart, the mouth speaks. And a transformed heart and mind will allow us victory in Christian living. And to you all, praise now be given in Jesus' name. Thank you for everything. Amen. 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 Take somebody's hand, tell them you're glad to be here. Just for us.